Good morning again, dear saints. Great to see you today. Thanks for spending some time with us in God's Word. It is the 11th of February today as we gather. Our psalm for today is Psalm 147, 1 through 3 and 6 through 11. And then the Old Testament reading again, the seventh chapter of the book of Job. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We'll hear the word of the Lord today from the psalmist. This is Psalm again. This is Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord's the Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor is his pleasure in the legs of man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those whose hope is in his steadfast love. That last section right there of the psalmist is pretty fitting today for chapter 7 of Job. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, not necessarily in those who always act rightly toward him, Because as we'll see today, Job is complaining to God. And yet Job never denies, never walks away from God. Job's hope is still in God. But right now he's caught in the midst of it, and he doesn't understand it, and he doesn't like it. Hear the word of the Lord from Job chapter 7. Has not man a hard service on earth, and are not his days like the days of a hired hand? Like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like a hired hand who looks for his wages. So I am allotted months of emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing till the dawn. My flesh is clothed with worms and dirt. My skin hardens and then breaks out afresh. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath and my eye will never again see good. The eye of him who sees me will behold me no more. While your eyes are on me, I shall be gone. As a cloud fades and vanishes, So he who goes down to Sheol does not come up. He returns no more to his house, or does his place know him any more. Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. I am, am I the sea or a sea monster that you set guard over me? When I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and you terrify me with visions, so that I would choose strangling and death rather than my bones. I loathe my life. I would not love forever. Leave me alone, for my days are a breath. What is man that you make so much of him and that you set your heart on him? Visit him every morning and test him every moment. How long will you look away from me, nor leave me alone till I swallow my spit? If I sin, what do I do to you, you watcher of mankind? Why have you made me your mark? Why have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I shall die in the earth. You will seek me, but I shall not be. This is the word of the Lord. 
You could sum up up chapter 7 very clearly with Job saying to God, leave me alone. All the things that are going on with everything that Job has encountered, he is crying out to God. He can't help. He can't hide his complaint. He doesn't go to Eliphaz or to Bildad. He goes directly to God and he voices his great complaint. Job's life is a life of struggle right here. You can hear it in what he says. But the night is long. He lays down. When shall I arise? His night is full of tossing and turning and no sleep. Classic signs of depression that Job could very easily be in. He describes his his physicalness of his body and the the disease that's come upon him. Maybe like... um, like, um, a skin disease of some kind where his skin cracks open and festers and it's full of worms, full of maggots as they eat his dead and decomposing flesh. His body is, is struggling. He's got pain and suffering and he cries out to God and yet God seems to pay no attention. How long will you look away from me nor leave me alone till I swallow my spit? Which is a Hebrew Uh, euphemism of thinking about the very near end of his life. Job is struggling. Lord, why have you made me your mark? Why have I become a burden to you? Job doesn't understand. And he asks those hard questions. Why and how long? And we do the same. Sometimes when tragic events happen to us, we ask that same question, why, O Lord, thinking somehow that if God would just give us an answer, then we would be fine. But what we don't realize is by questioning God, by asking why and how long, what we're really doing is not trusting in God's mercy to carry us through it. We want an answer, so God, share with me your plan so we're on the same plane and we can suffer together. Job is struggling, no doubt. And when someone is struggling like Job, when they aren't getting any answers, when they see no end to their suffering, how do we comfort them? Pat them on the back and say, there, there, it'll be okay. Well, that might work for a little bit, but that's certainly not the best we can do. The best that we can do when someone that is in Job's position is to be with them to sit with them, to suffer with them, but always pointing them to the hope and the promise of God's word. I will be with you always. I will never leave you or forsake you. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will honor me. The Lord is my rock and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Driving them back again and again and again into the promises of God's word. This is an important task for us, dear saints, bringing comfort to those who are struggling. And one of the ways that we can do that, that we can bring comfort to those who are struggling, is to know God's word, to have it implanted right here in memory so that we don't have to search for a Bible or say the Bible says something like, We can say there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And again and again we point them back to the hope and promise that they have and that we have through Christ and his promises. We don't sometimes see an end to suffering, chronic pain, chronic illness, dehabilitating stroke or something that has simply taken away our ability. But the best hope and the best comfort we can give them is to surround them and immerse them in the absolutely unchangeable promises that God has given to them. Job is crying out to God, Lord, how long? Lord, just leave me alone. And our response to Job would be to simply point them, point him to the hope and the promise that we have in Christ our Savior. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Well, as Job cries out to God, and he asks, How long, O Lord? Where would we go? Well, we could go to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And Luther writes this, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church he daily and richly forgives me of all my sins and the sins of all believers, and on the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. That section right there would be a good section to be, to read to someone who is suffering. We pray. Father of grace and mercy, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the hope and the promise that you have given to us. Strengthen us in this, dear Father. And when others are suffering, we pray, Father, that you would give us the words and the wisdom to continue to point them to your unchanging grace and mercy. Be with those today who are struggling and suffering. Ease their pain, dear Father, and increase their faith to trust in you. All of these things and whatever else you know we need, we ask in Jesus who's taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear saints, continue to be with your friends who are suffering and to point them to Christ. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.